Hey, Jonathan from Bacchus Wine Tasting here, tasting some wine in the attic, and I've got quite the unusual number this evening. I have a Tavelle from La Fonde. And as you might have seen from the colour, but I'm going to give you a close-up now. This is um not your, I'm going to say not your go-to rosé, because I know, myself included, um, the vast majority of us, of us go for those kind of Provence style, very bush, light extraction roses. And this is anything but. <laughs> uh, if, if you may even be thinking that Jonathan lost his mind, and this is certainly a red wine that he's drinking, <laughs> it could almost be. This is a classic colour for Tavelle roses, which is just down in the south of France, in the southern Rhone Valley. It's just on the other side of the Rhone River compared to most of the crews like Chateauneuf de Pape, Gigandas. Um, you have Lurac and Tavel, neighbouring crews. Tavel is the crew in question. So really prestigious given crew status. And as the history goes, it was Pope Clementine who decreed at this point when Tavel as a region was producing whites, reds and roses, he enjoyed these roses so much that he said no, no to the whites, no to the reds, just make this. <laughs> and they did for uh, for quite some time. And it's only been relatively recently, really, uh, that Tavel has started to produce whites and reds again. But they are in very, very small proportions compared to to their roses. In fact, actually, these roses are incredibly rare themselves. They're quite hard to get. Um, beyond the French borders, because it is true what they say. I have a good authority uh, from my contacts in France. But if they really don't need to, they won't send their wine abroad. <laughs> OK, this is nothing short of a cherry bomb. In the nicest possible way, it is so powerful. There's, there's cherry in abundance. There is lovely wild strawberry and if you find that description somewhat pretentious and that's fine um but i think it certainly has its place and if you want to make a point of difference to the roses that perhaps have that softer strawberry nature character this is this is wild this is this is serious stuff wild strawberries cherries there's a, there's a dryness to this wine as well, which is probably quite surprising for some of us who are thinking, that certainly looks very sweet to me. So I think currants and cranberries are quite evocative as well for this wine. And on that dry note, this is bone dry. I know consumers, as consumers, we, we, we are particularly with roses, we are so led by the colour and we have this uh, perception that darker, redder um, roses are sweeter. And, I, you know, if we think about some of the rosé examples from Spain, Garnacha, then certainly they can uh, have a sweetness to them. Pink, uh, pink uh, white Zinfandels as well in California can have a little bit more extraction. Um, can be sweeter and we have these associations but this is not the case here this is classic color and style for Tavelle roses they are bone dry but they are macerated on the skins for several days to extract that color from the red varieties that are used in the blend we've got eight varieties here uh, which i'm going to come back onto in a second but on the palette bone dry that power comes through so we get that lovely dryness to the the cranberries and the currants the cherry is there strawberry is still there kind of softening um that out somewhat and adding a little bit of fleshiness and juicy juiciness uh which is really really um needed but balances the wine out beautifully but the power also comes from the alcohol this is a whopping 14 percent uh abv so high alcohol um anyway but particularly high when we when we think about roses and in, 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 in their generality um and where we find them around the world it's it's quite rare to find them punching that high you can smell it on the nose 
you could be with. Uh, but not in an unpleasant way. This is such a powerful wine. It's so well balanced. You know, the, no, many and many a rosé would struggle to to carry that weight of alcohol uh, and not feel um, unbalanced in some way. So I think that is real testament to the quality of this wine here from uh, from Lafond. Great varieties I made a little reference to a moment ago. Uh, no less than eight. I usually forget one or two. So let's just see how how well I do here. Um, we've got we've got the classic GSM blend. So I'll start off there. We're in the south of France. We're in the southern Rhone. Most of our red wines are produced with these three varieties anyway. So we've got Grenache, Syrah, and Mobedra. Grenache is at sixty percent. Sierra's at 5%, Mobedra's at 5%. In fact, I think Sierra's at 10%. We'll do the maths, you can check me on that. Uh, then we have some Carignan, we have some Sinso, both of those are at 5%. Um, then we've got some of the varieties such as Pickpool, the Pinay, uh, Boubalonk, and I feel like there will be at least one more, but I've not really done very well on counting my fingers. Carignan, Cinso, Claret. I've remembered the final one. <laughs> so they are the whole varieties there. So Grenache carrying the, 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 the kind of the biggest proportion of the weight at 60%. The other varieties, mainly 5%, uh, having so many. Sierra at 10% as well. There's a magnificent blend going on here. Um, I, I won't remember the name of the other variety. I think I've done incredibly well so far. Uh, legally permitted. There are nine varieties uh, allowed to be blended in Tebel. So to have eight of them here is, is, is fantastic to kind of appreciate that. And when you go through the tasting note and you pick out all those flavors and characters, then you can, you know, you can really appreciate what the what those varieties, even the supporting blends of 5%, they're all kind of weaving in their own character and adding these layers of, of character and, and and complexity. Um, I think it's an absolutely fantastic wine. Do not be, if this, if this video uh, serves only one purpose, do not, do not be led by colour in wine. Uh, I, I would hazard a guess some people would, would, would send it back, heaven forbid. <laughs> Don't say pour it, I'll give it a try and then please pour some more. <laughs> Good night, thank you, and I'll catch up with you guys soon.